We've discovered together over the past few virtual rabbis that there are a few different themes that permeate our Sidur. One of those themes, the triad of creation, revelation, and redemption, and another one, which is little b, big b, little b. Little b is a blessing, big b is a piece of Bible, something from our Tanakh, and then little b is a blessing again. And we've learned together that the Shema and her blessings contain both of these uh, thematic units within it. So before we say the Shema, there's a small b, a little b, a blessing. In fact, there are two before we say the Shema. And then after, uh, then the Shema itself is the Bible from the Tanakh. And then after the Shema, we have another little b. And it just so turns out, just so happens, that the first blessing before the Shema is about creation. That's the Yotzer Or. The second blessing before the Shema is the Ahava Rabbah, which is about revelation and how God loves us through the gift of God's Torah and God revealing God's self to us. And today we're going to look at the blessing after the Shema, which is redemption. Last time we also looked at the Shema itself and how it teaches us how we can love God. The Ve'ahavta teaching us uh, how we should love God by doing mitzvot. The Vahaya Ib Shmoa, the second paragraph, teaching us um, why we should love God and do these mitzvot. And the third paragraph, uh, the Vayomer, reminding us how we can remember to do all these mitzvot through the tzitzit. Today we're looking, though, at the Geulah. The Geula is that third little B, the one that follows the Shema. And it's actually quite a lengthy prayer. It goes from the end of the Shema all the way up until the Amidah in the morning service. Uh, we also have this in the evening service as well. Uh, there's an additional prayer in the evening service that doesn't exist uh, or doesn't reside in the morning service called the Hashki Venu. We could talk about that another time. But the Geula prayer, Geula means redemption, uh, follows the Shema. And it is that third piece of the triad. It's the redemption theme. Now, like the other two themes of creation and revelation, the rabbis had to struggle with a dilemma. The dilemma is, none of us were there for creation, so how do we experience it? None of us remember revelation, so how can we possibly experience it? And none of us have experienced yet redemption, because the redemption that the rabbis in the Siddur are talking about are the future redemption, the redemption of the world to come. So how can we relate to any of these three ideas when we either haven't, have not yet, or don't remember experiencing them? Well, for the first one, we learned that we experience creation through the sun rising every day and going down at night. We experience revelation through study of Torah and living Torah. That action and that learning every day allows us to hear that voice of God ringing from Mount Sinai still. And in this third uh, tefillah, in the prayer of redemption, the Geulah, since we haven't yet experienced that final redemption that the prayer is talking about, the Sidur asks us to remember a redemption that happened before in our history. And that redemption is the redemption of the Israelites from Egyptian slavery. And so, uh, as part of our Geulah prayer, it says, From Egypt you redeemed us, O Lord our God, from the house of bondage you delivered us. You revealed your saving power at the sea when the children of Israel passed through in safety. And then we uh, go on, it says, Moses and the children of Israel proclaimed in great exultation, and we sing, or whatever tune you like to use for at the shore of the sea they crossed in safety they re the redeemed sang a new song to you so while the redemption that the rabbis want us to understand and appreciate in our Sidur isn't just a historical redemption it's one that's coming in the future it's one that we have to look forward to and one that we can participate in bringing about in order for us to be able to relate to that, the rabbis teach us and remind us of a redemption that happened in our history, that of the Israelites fleeing from Egypt and God saving us at the Sea of Reeds. And we remember that through this song, Micha Mocha, that is of course part of another prayer that we had earlier in our service, the Az Yashir Moshe, which is straight out of the Bible, which reminds us of the song that Moses and Miriam sang as they crossed the Sea of Reeds. One last piece about this tefillah, about Micha Mocha specifically, if you take a look at the first letter of each of the first four words, Mi Chamocha Ba'ilim Adonai, take the first letter, Mem, Chaf, Bet, Yud, put it together, you get Maccabee. Maccabees were, of course, the uh, Jews 
who uh, battled against and defended the temple uh, back in the, our Hanukkah story in 167 BCE. And uh, Maccabees, that was another time of redemption because, of course, that uh, we can defend ourselves, we can work hard, we must work hard to make our world a better place and to bring about redemption. But uh, in Judaism, we believe that uh, we're not the only ones who are involved in bringing redemption about, that we also have to rely on God. And so even in the story of the Maccabees, which was such a wonderful uh, uh, success and victory for the Jews, we also remember that God had a hand in that. God had a hand in getting us out of Egypt in the story of the Maccabees. And with our help, God will have a hand in bringing the final redemption, the Messiah, the end of days. And uh, please, God, it should come soon. And we should all continue to work very, very hard as we pray every day for it to come. Until next week, Lehit Rhodes. Ne darba ko de